There is a popular saying that goes, never trust something you read online. And while this statement is not true, and one that is actually quite easy to disprove, it points to the reality of what the online space is. A collection of people simply saying whatever they want. While much of the information found online is true, a lot of it is not. Today, we now have credible online sources that provide concrete and up-to-date information on just about everything. And they are sometimes even more accurate and abundant in data than traditional forms of research, such as books. However, with these useful sites and databases came other websites, like 4chan, where users compose topics on just about anything, completely anonymously. This has led to truckloads of false information, along with trolls posting just about whatever they want. Many of these posts are obviously fake or made to intentionally sound scary or eerie, so that the author can gain some attention. There are even forums and subreddits completely dedicated to people posting their fake horror stories, due to how popular this genre became. So, when a user wrote a post claiming that they had just committed murder, of course, everyone assumed it was just another troll. After all, almost all of the posts that start this way end up being a fantastical story, but not this one. This is the story of the 4chan murderer. Now before I get into the video itself, I would like to say that this story is about a real life murder, and I want to be as respectful as possible to the family members and friends of those who were impacted. For that reason, I will not be showing any photos of the events, nor will I address the woman involved by name. I hope that this video can shed a light on how actions like those taken by the perpetrator are even more horrific than they initially seem. On November 4th, 2014, an anonymous member posted on the 4chan b-board, a place for random postings. The user started the thread with a simple one-liner. Turns out it's way harder to strangle someone to death than it looks in the movies. Accompanying this line was a photo of a woman who had seemingly been murdered. The responses to the post were almost comedic in a way readers taking the post as simply a mere joke, with one user writing, um, duh, cause those people are acting. The author followed up the original post with another photo of the same woman and the line, she fought so damn hard. At this point, people still assumed that this was a troll post, but some started to question whether or not there was some truth behind the images. After the original poster, told them to take a look at the news. The anonymous user wrote, check the news for Port Orchard, Washington in a few hours. Her son will be home from school soon and he'll find her, then call the cops. I just wanted to share the pics quickly before they find me. I bought a BB gun that looks realistic enough. When they come, I'll pull it and it will be a suicide by cop. I understand the doubts, just check the effing news. I have to lose my phone now. And he posted yet another image of his victim. And that would be the last post the anonymous user made. However, the story does not end there. Sure enough, the son of the woman depicted in the photograph would arrive home from school a few hours later and swiftly call his dad, who arrived shortly after. The father would then call the cops to the scene, which was far more upsetting than what was shared online. They found the woman in her room, with blankets covering her and pillowcases over her head. On the pillowcase was her ID, with the word dead written on it. After the medics arrived at the scene and confirmed that the woman was dead, the sheriff deputy and detectives searched the rest of the apartment. They found a framed photo on the bedroom wall with the words, she killed me first, written across them. The window blinds of the room were also down and written on the window was the phrase, bad news. As for the woman herself, it appeared as if she had been brutally beaten, but there were also strange words 
written across her body, similar to the words written across the apartment. So, the investigation began with one clear and obvious suspect, the woman's boyfriend, David Kalick. He was missing along with the woman's Ford Focus. A short time later, the detectives recovered photos from Kalick's phone of the woman lying on her bedroom floor dead. This was pretty conclusive evidence. Hey guys, thank you for making it this far in the video. I wanted to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, Keeps. The first sponsor of this channel and a company that provides quality hair loss treatment without the hassle and time investment of lengthy doctor visits. Keeps is a subscription service that provides male pattern hair loss treatment for a fraction of the cost and from the comfort of your home. You can speak to a licensed doctor using their website and figure out what treatment is right for you, as Keeps offers generic versions of the FDA-approved medications for hair loss. It has become a simple fact the two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they are 35. And the best way to treat this is to do it while you still can. If you'd like to check them out and support the channel, go to keeps.com slash chillfuel or click on the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Once again, that's keeps.com slash chillfuel. Thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video segment and helping to make this content possible. In addition, all proceeds I make from this sponsor section will be donated to domestic abuse charities. For more info, visit the description down below. A short time later, the detectives recovered photos from Kalik's phone of the woman lying on her bedroom floor dead. This was pretty conclusive evidence. Texts from Kalik's phone were then made to his employer, stating that he had done something bad. He also messaged a friend that he had effed up really bad last night and would be in trouble. Then, he subsequently turned off his phone to avoid being tracked. Security footage from the day after found Kalik pawning a laptop around 1pm, then going to a nearby store to purchase vodka. After that, he stopped by a Walmart at around 2.30 and security footage showed him purchasing a BB pistol and ammunition. You might remember from earlier that in the anonymous posts on 4chan, the author wrote that he bought a BB gun to attempt a suicide by cop. The BB gun Kalik purchased was a replica of a Beretta-style gun. Kalik then sat in the Walmart parking lot and uploaded the photos to 4chan, along with his string of disturbing posts. After that, he would drive to Portland, Oregon and visit a local bar. Later that same evening, police would spot the missing Gold Ford Focus with Kalik behind the wheel. A high-speed chase ensued, with Kalik managing to escape by driving into oncoming traffic. The possibility of a civilian casualty caused the cops to stop their chase. Later that same evening, police would spot the missing Gold Ford Focus, abandoned in a parking lot. At around 8.45 p.m. that night, Kalik would turn himself in at a transit center in Wilsonville, Oregon. In the woods nearby from which Kalik emerged, the police would find a box spring with the words, Dave's Last Stand written on it, in the same style as the messages in the apartment. They also found a note that said, I killed blank. I strangled her with my hands, then a shoelace. I had no reason other than I was drunk and she pissed me off. Running from the cops was so fun. David Kalik would be charged with first degree murder, theft of a motor vehicle, and second degree possession of stolen property. During the trial, Kalik's defense did not argue the case that he was the one responsible for killing the woman. However, when it came time to answer for his actions of the murder and the subsequent decisions made, he claimed that he had no recollection of them. In fact, he claimed to remember only a few details from the days preceding the murder, like texting his boss that he'll see him in the news and a quote-unquote exhilarating experience during the police chase. 
When it came to the police chase and the BB gun itself though, Cowick said that he must have been able to formulate a plan, despite not remembering the actual events. His defense would argue that Cowick suffered from an organic brain syndrome caused by alcohol, and therefore the murder could not have been premeditated. The jury, of course, did not see it this way, primarily due to the lack of remorse shown by Kalik in both the online posts and the messages he wrote in various locations. In addition to this, the crimes committed involved domestic violence convictions. This resulted in a sentence of 82 years in prison for Kalik, which was far beyond his offender's score standard range, originally estimated at around 40 years. At the end of the day, Kalik showed no signs of remorse in his 4chan posts, and not many until he was actually in custody. As for the strange 4chan posts, they were taken down after just a few hours by the site itself. However, in the short time it was up, many archives of it were made. I think it is safe to assume though, that after the viewers of the thread realized that they were the first to witness footage of a murder, they were shocked. I wish I could say that this case is one that has some sort of happy ending. However, that is simply not true. It is a deeply saddening situation that resulted out of someone's heartless actions. The most perplexing part of it all seems to be how Kalik claimed he did not have any recollection of the posts made to 4chan, while also admitting that it was him that made them. Of course, this was likely just part of his defense. This case is quite a strange one, and an eerie example of a mysterious set of posts on a website notorious for made-up stories that actually turned out to be telling exactly the truth. Revisiting this set of online posts with the information that these events were real makes them even more eerie and disturbing. From the blunt way of speaking Kalik had, the sarcastic responses. It is truly a story that seems to be straight out of a fiction novel. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would consider leaving a like or getting subscribed, as it really helps me grow the channel. If you want to get connected to the community, you can join our Discord server or follow me on Twitter at FuelChill. Thanks again, and have a good night.